Welcome to the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Welcome to Cooperative Extension, and most certainly the University of Arizona. We're delighted to have you aboard and uh, eager to tell you a little bit about our unique college. We're really the college where people come who want to do great science with a passion and with their own vision. And our vision stems from the individual and moves us right the way through the economy to the planet. We're doing things with uh, uh, that have transformed the way that, that society eats, the way that society grows food, the way that society shops. Our faculty and students together tackle uh, sort of the grand challenge questions like uh, fighting obesity and diabetes, uh, mitigating climate change, sustainably feeding a planet of nine billion people, setting public policy toward water and land usage, uh, applying big data to come up with solutions for dozens of problems that would help strengthen families and communities across Arizona and the nation. We need different perspectives to tackle a lot of the issues. We need to look at different ways how we're teaching people that have different cultural or ethnic backgrounds because there is no such thing as one size fits, fits all educational offering. And I'd like to welcome everyone to the, to the college and to the University of Arizona. Everybody's discipline is the most important discipline. Our entomologists, the most important thing in the world is insects. Our plant scientists, well, without plants, the world wouldn't exist. Our Swiss people, soil, water, environmental science people, well, without um, the, the critical zone, well, none of this would exist. So everybody's really important and everyone's equal important, but everybody's motivated with a, a purpose, a why, a mission. Well, it's interesting to think about the Cooperative Extension Organization being functional and unique to a land-grant institution. The University of Arizona is a land-grant institution for the state of Arizona. These were originally formed in 1862 with the signing of the Morrill Act by Abraham Lincoln. So in 1862, the country was involved in an existential civil war. For 30 years before that, Senator Morrill had been trying to push this idea of taking advantage of our greatest natural resource, our people's minds and their ingenuity. Up until that point, no economic superpower in the world had taken advantage of its everyday people. You had to be from wealth or privilege or the clergy to be able to attend higher education. And that meant that only a small population of the country was really driving the economy forward. Lots of other people were working in factories, on farms and fields, but they didn't have the capacity, the, the capacity inside themselves to take that further, to start their own companies, to change law and policy, to be involved in global trade. Certainly the hallmark of land grants and the origin of them was to do research and move that into the state so that it could be used to solve real world issues. Back in the late 1800s, that was agriculture. Today, it's a wide array of disciplines ranging from environmental sciences and climate sciences to human health and nutrition to how do we feed the world. Abraham Lincoln's legacy would be America not just joining the ranks of global economic superpowers but becoming the most powerful economic superpower the world's ever seen. In just 50 years after the Land Grant Act was signed, America was positioned to single-handedly enter and win a world war. And that's only because it had the economic power that derived from all these people that were educated in land-grant universities. There were no other public universities. These land-grant universities became models for our country's other great public universities. Extension is somewhat different than that. We need the expertise with people that we hire, but we're here with more mission-oriented direction to solve the problems of not what we feel is interesting, <laughs> but what are the real problems and issues that are being addressed or in need out in the state. Therefore, our connections with communities, our relationships with communities is really key. And that's one of the things that sets Cooperative Extension apart from the rest of the college and the rest of the university. So these are three what you might call grand challenges that we see today, feeding the world, climate, and human health, which you know, the College of Agriculture is very firmly entrenched and in fact are major, major research players in those three areas.
On August 5th, 2015, um, there was an acid mine drainage um, that leaked into the Animas River in Colorado, spilling about 3 million uh, gallons of acid mine drainage. And um, it was seen by many people as a Yellow River. The impacts that they experience um, from impacts to the environment are quite different because of their deep connection to the environment and their spirit, spirituality and cultural values. I immediately brought together um, a team of faculty and researchers to brainstorm on what kind of uh, work we could do to address these questions. The goal of putting everything under the umbrella of science at work is to make sure that everyone in the state can understand Cal's contributions to the economic development of the state and the benefits of our degree programs. In terms of the range of academic programs, I think Cal's is about as diverse a college as you're going to find anywhere. Um, we have uh, more than uh, 15 undergraduate uh, degrees. We have an astonishing 50 plus different graduate programs that lead to master's degrees or PhD degrees or various professional certificates. But more than the number of, of degrees, it's the range of topics that I find most amazing. Um, you can find or students can find uh, preparation for just about any career somewhere in a, in a CALS uh, degree program. And that's a good thing because uh, student surveys tell us that 80% of our incoming students t uh, indicate that uh, employability after graduation is the most important factor that they consider when they decide uh, where to go to school. Whether we're educating within our walls or we're educating outside of our walls to everybody in the state, all seven million people. And that is, we're educating to make our world a better and more resilient place, very often through something associated with biology. Moving the needle on our purpose of, of serving the public good and educating our students, making them prepared uh, for the, whatever their future holds for them. And even though I don't directly work with, with folks, I'm, I'm a very employee service kind of uh, role, I think that I still impact the the mission by by working through through folks and making it a better workplace for them how do we how do we create a sustainable environment that can that can grow and meet the needs of this growing population but also be able to live within a, a planet that is environmentally sustainable and, and sound uh, that, that has drinkable water you know an environment that we want to live in so you're talking about a lot of cross-discipline activities, things that involve um, uh, human-animal interdependence, things that involve uh, clean water and clean air, things that involve uh, One Health, and the, the concept of One Health being all of it going into, you know, whether it's environment, water, animals, plants, whatever it is, all of those going into um, uh, uh, the health of, of an environment that sustains a healthy population. It's a constant effort to continually keep educating people so that we are, try to be as much as we can data-driven. We have political processes which sometimes take that a little bit astray, but nevertheless, you know, the, the way forward is to be data-driven, and the way to be data-driven is to use data and to educate people that that is the best way to solve the issues that face us today. Ideology doesn't help us. You know, it is about using the objective data and the five senses we have to, to assess the world and to move it forward in ways that positively impact us, people, and the planet in ways that are most productive. Nine billion people by 2050, that's a, a goal and that's a challenge that, that is really going, that's basically a moonshot for um, our college. Our units seek to fulfill the research mission which is to create new knowledge uh, across the continuum from basic to applied research, and then to convey that to the citizens of Arizona, the US, and the world. And that also makes research an economic engine because in addition to solving real world problems, we develop inventions and companies, and sometimes we launch entire industries. So CALS is unique in that it, as a college, it has a matrix structure and so you have associate deans 
uh, working, working through their mission orientation of teaching, research, and cooperative extension. And then you have uh, uh, unit heads or unit leaders working across all of those areas. And so uh, whether it's nutritional sciences or, or family consumer sciences or wherever you are, you're, you're going to have interactions with folks from teaching, research, and cooperative extension in every area. There's three main areas within the universe or within CALS that uh, we, we primarily operate within. We have academic units, traditional faculty home based units. We also have experiment station units. Uh, those are around the state, such as Maricopa Agricultural Center or Safford Agricultural Center. And then we also have cooperative extension units, and those units are spread across the state in all 15 counties. Well, what's unique about cooperative extension is that we have faculty and staff in every academic unit, every county office. We have county offices in every county in the state, 15 in the case of Arizona. Many counties, we have more than one office, and we have faculty and staff from cooperative extension in each of those. And then finally, in addition, we have faculty and staff in every one of our experiment station units. So we are the most ubiquitous element in the entire college outside of teaching and research Cooperative Extension extends into every facet of the college. In addition to that, Cooperative Extension is responsible for virtually all of the translational and applied research that's conducted in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences today. And what we do is we take that information from our research programs and extend that into extension education programs in a useful, practical, productive way. Of course, everyone wants to be successful. And I can tell you three basic things that you need to do to be, be successful. First of all, know your job. Do it and do it well. Do it the very best that you can. Secondly, be a professional. Always exercise and develop the professional capacities to the fullest extent. And that means your professional integrity, your honesty, and your adherence to the professional standards that you know are, are associated with good education and good research. So your professionalism, do your job and do it well. And then the other thing that's important, really important, and it's not just a cliche, teamwork. People talk about the University of Arizona as having very low walls between our silos. And you know, everybody at every university says that when you hire, but it's actually true here. You need to get out and interact with other parts of campus. There's gonna be the a variety of different shared governance groups. Shared governance is very important here at the, in, in CALS especially, but also at the U of A. So really a person in extension, I say, has to develop the capacity to be bilingual and bicultural. And by this, I mean they have to have the capacity to be fluent, capable of working in the culture and speak the language in the academy on the campus at the university. And then they have to also then transition, go out into the community and speak the language of the people in the community in the common vernacular and be able to communicate science and information in a practical way. Our college is one of the first in the, in the university that has started to form a committee to address diversity in the 1990s, long before any other college has done anything about fostering different backgrounds, diversity of thought, diversity, uh, uh, cultural and ethnic diversity. We want to hear your opinions and we want to uh, use your, your experiences uh, and you should be able to feel safe in our workplace. There are other places one could be that you go to the you go to your job every day and you know maybe you do an adequate performance, but very few opportunities for actually changing someone's life. My job today and what motivates me today, and I thank most of my colleagues, is the is our opportunity and our capacity to actually help and make the world a better place, one little bit at a time. And we can do that. And we do it through our connectivity with communities and our relationships. Take advantage of the opportunities to uh, network and learn about the resources that CALS offers. Do your job well, learn about your job, see how it connects into the bigger whole. When you start to see how what you're doing is connecting into a larger initiative and a larger effort, whether that's within your unit or within all of CALS or the university, I think there's much more job satisfaction about what you're doing. 
So understanding the mission and the goals of what you're doing and why you're doing it are very important to job satisfaction.